Hi, welcome back guys. We're going to finish our stair unit today. Um, this week, last uh, two weeks ago, we I taught you how to calculate the shred cut and the riser cut to create your stringer for a set of stairs. Um, or I taught you how to find that, that measurement. Now I want you to actually, now I want to show you a little bit of how to lay that out on a stringer. Okay. A quick review though, if you were to have a um, total rise that you needed to go of 28 inches, okay, um, in order to find out what that, what that tread and riser cut would be, we'd have to take our max riser height that it can be, whether it's, you know, the code will tell you what that is, um, or if you just have a preference um, that's even lower than the code, but you, you want to make stay within that, that preference. Um, Typically, what I find codes is the very max you can go is seven and three quarters as a riser height. So if I divide twenty-eight by seven and three quarter, right, I get three point six. So I need three point six rises. Right. Now I can't have a point six of a rise and make the last step um, a different a different height than the rest, and that's definitely not okay. So I round up, and you always round up even if this is a number less than point five. Okay. Um, because you, in order, when you round up, it forces this to go down, which means it's good because the max is seven and three quarter. We can only go down. So if I um, take four steps and I have twenty eight inches, divide those four steps into, I get each step, each rise, excuse me, each rise height should be seven inches. All right, and then I said, hey, typically it's just ten inches is what we do for our tread, unless something special is going on. So my tread cut is going to be ten inches, and my riser cut is going to be seven inches. All right. Now I'm going to show you something also on the construction math calculator. If you have one of those, you can also do this calculation. Okay. Again, it's good to know this though, because your calculator will not always give you the correct answer. Okay. Here's the construction master calculator. This is the version five. If you notice it has a stair button and we've talked about this before, but anytime you type in a measurement, you need to also include the units with this. Um, that's one of the advantages of this calculator. It works directly with units. So if I were to say, hey, I've got 28, type this in 28, I need to click the inch button, okay, 28 inches, and I'm gonna store that as my rise. So then I'm gonna put, push the rise button. All right, now it's stored as the rise. All right, now it's pretty simple. All I gotta do is click the stair button. Okay. And I can click it repeatedly to get my different measurements that I need. So if I click the stair button here once, it tells me the riser height should be 7 inches. Well, that's what we figured out with our math. If I click it again, it says, hey, there's four rises total. Okay. So again, remember, if you're using the subfloor as a rise, you don't, in your stringer, you only actually need to have three. And uh, this tells you how accurate we, I, actually, I don't really know what that button is. I believe it's how accurate. Your, the measurement is that it gives, gives you. This is your tread width. 10 inches is what the default is set into. So if you don't plug in a run or anything like that, it'll automatically tell you what the default is. And this is the case of 10 inches. Um, tells you I need three treads because you need you don't need that last um, tread because it's just the bottom floor. It's already a, a thing to step on. And this is the stringer length you'll need, at least a 36 inch board. Okay. Or that's how long your stringer will be, so I'd get something a little bit longer typically, but 36 inches would just barely give you enough if you didn't make any mistakes. Okay. Um, that tells you the angle at which your, your uh, stairs will be at. And this gives you the total run. And we already typed in the total rise. Now if I click it one more time, it'll tell me what my defaults are, or what my uh, the calculator says is, hey, um, you can't go above this is seven and three quarter. Now I plug that in. I think sometimes this comes pre-default at seven and a half is the max. And tread width is ten. And what I said um, sometimes this calculator will give the wrong answer. If you if instead of uh, twenty eight inches, if we were to go to forty eight inches, forty eight inch, and make that my total rise. If I click the stair button. It says, oh, riser height is 8 inches, but look, there's that little exclamation point there that's saying, hey, this is above what you set as the default, as, as the code. Okay, so in this case, I would go back to my own math by hand to figure out exactly what I should do. Um, another way I guess you could think about it is, hey, you'd have to go one less. So in other words, they say there should be six rises. 
um, or you'd have to go one more, we're actually going to need seven rises. Okay. So then you go and, and uh, take your 48 divided by seven to get your actual height. Okay. But we're going to use the 28 inches for the, the stringer that I'm going to show you. All right. So I've got a board here for us to, to work with. Should be long enough for what we need. Now this is only a two by eight board because that's what I had in my house, but you actually need a two by 10 or two by 12. And I'll show you in a minute here, here why that is the case. Um, so you'll need the board, the stringer board to, to work with. You'll need a builder square. There's other squares you could use, but builder square would be the best here. And you'll need these metal brass things called stair knocks. Okay. And essentially all that is just a, a clasp okay, that you clip, that you're able to uh, secure on your builder square. Okay. These help, this help you lay out your tread cuts and riser cuts. Um, now in my case, I want it to be 10 inches for the uh, tread cut. So I put mine on the outside. There's other ways you can do this, but I put mine on the outside and I move it to where the, the, the stair knock is at the 10 inches just um, to the left. So in other words, it's, the stair knock is, is greater than the 10 inches, but right at the edge, it's right, right at the 10 inches. Okay. This is the same thing, seven and a half, um, though for the rise cut. All right, once I got those set, I take my board. I also need um, something to mark my board with. I'm going to use a permanent marker so you can see it better. You'll probably have a carpenter's pencil. And I will also need a tape measure. Okay. So I take my board. I uh, stick it, stick my builder's, builder's square on the outside of the board. And Daddy. did it the wrong way there, like this. Okay. And then I am going to scribe my mark here, my first mark. Okay, so I take my, and I'm going to move this a little bit here so you can kind of imagine what it's going to look like more. The stringer's going to be at a diagonal, all right? Okay. And now I'm going to mark and kind of go to the top as much as I can possible, as possible. And um, usually I'll probably lay this out flat on the ground so I don't have to worry about holding this, but just so you can see it. I'm going to do a little bit of gymnastics here. And... Uh, Scribe here, down to the edge, and scribe over the edge. Okay. All right, now this first one you just want to do, and then you want to measure it. Okay, make sure your stair knocks are in the right spot. So I take my tape measure, all right, and I'm going to move this down. Make sure I'm at 7 inches, and I am exactly. And make sure I'm at 10 inches. Okay, I'm going to burn an inch here so I can get it straight to the edge. And I am, so I'm exactly at 10 inches, so we're good. So I can go ahead and use this, the builder square to, to scribe out my next ones. And all I do is just kind of stair step it down, uh, pardon the pun there. So I, I line up my stair knock here with my black line that I just ended on the tread cut. Now make sure you, you're kind of lining up, in this case, 7 inches with where the line was that you just drew for your tread cut, okay? And then you're going to go start down. And you're gonna keep doing that until you've uh, exhausted all your all your steps. Okay, so I've already have scribed all the way down the steps that I have in place. So now, if you look at this top piece here, um, your your first on your stringer, the first thing you're gonna need is a tread. Okay, because again, you're using the subfloor as your your rise, generally speaking. Okay, so in other words, if I look at this guy here, I don't need this rise. All right, this is the piece that I'm cutting out. That's my triangle I'm cutting out. Okay. My foot will go on here, and then I'll step up to the top level. All right, so um, I don't need this because this will be directly latched on to the subfloor. So I can take this line, and I can extend it down, and I'll cut off this piece. Okay, um, I'll keep this. I'll cut off my triangle here. I'll keep this. Cut off my triangle here. Keep this. Cut off my triangle here. Now I do mark what I cut out so I don't confuse myself. All right, so now this last tread here, okay, you don't need because that's going to be what you're stepping on the bottom landing, okay? So I can also extend this horizontally. Okay, this one's horizontally. This one's vertically extended. All right, so, and I'll, I'd actually take my square or a straight edge and make it make it nice and straight, okay? I'm just doing it here um, just to, for the purpose of the video. Um, and so then all this down here would also be waste, all right, which is good because it's a big gnarly knot right there. All right, so now I want to make sure before I cut anything that I have enough steps to get to where I need to go. So I have one step up here, two here, and three here. Okay, and then my subfloor would be the fourth step. 
So I have four steps of seven inches. I get 28 inches total rise. That's where I need to go. Okay, so make sure before you cut anything, you kind of think through, make sure you laid it out right. All right, now you can go ahead and cut this out um, at this point if you want to, or you can scribe a couple of other things here, which I'll show you before you do your cuts. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is, see how skinny this amount is right here? This is only like an inch, maybe an inch and a half. That's not going to be a thick enough piece of board to support the weight of someone stepping on here. That's why you generally use 2x10s um, and sometimes 2x12s to stiffen this up. And there's a code that has to be a certain certain amount, but this would not fly with the code. It's just all that I had in my garage. Okay. Uh, all right, so the other things that you can cut before you, or you can scribe before you cut if you want, are your tread deduction. Okay, what a tread deduction is, is, hey, you're going to put a board on top. You're going to have like three or two of these stringers. Okay, they're your supports for the actual boards that go on here that you step on. Okay or that the riser boards here that you keep your foot from going into. All right, so imagine you're gonna put a riser, a tread here, okay, a tread board on here, not down at the bottom because that's where your finished bottom floor is. So if you put a tread board here but not here, the rise has increased by the amount of that tread, that tread board. And we don't want it to, right? It's supposed to say seven inches. So that's gonna be a problem. Let's see what happens if we go up here. We put a tread board here, okay, it increased the, the rise. But this one has increased, so this total distance, the absolute distance between them is still the same. So that's okay. We keep on going up. We put a tread board up here, okay? And then that makes this okay because they matched up because we added it, we added the same amount to both, so the total distance is the same, all right? Um, but when we add a tread up here, but not to our, our top floor, that shrink the distance, okay? So in other words, once you start adding treads after you put these stringers in, you're going to have too big a step here, and you're going to have too small of a step up here. So how do we account for that? Well, we just take off the the thickness of a tread board on the bottom to begin with. That moves this down to the right height, and it moves this down, okay, which then increases it a little bit, increases the distance to make it the right height. All right, so, um, and that just is determining how thick your tread board is. If you're using 2 by material, you're going to cut off an inch and a half down here. If you're using... One by material, like finished material, like you're going to see the wood. Okay, then you're going to cut off like three quarters of an inch down here. It just depends on how thick it is. Um, so this right here, I'm just kind of approximating, would be what you cut out for your tread deduction. All right, you do the same thing for risers, okay, if you have risers. Now, um, right now, exterior stairs a lot of times don't have risers. They're just open underneath here, okay? It doesn't matter if your toe goes in a little bit. They're just open, okay? Okay. Um, but if you do have riser boards that you're going to stick on here, on the vertical parts, okay, then you're going to need to do a riser deduction as well. Because if you put a riser board down here, um, you've extended out the, the tread uh, the tread length there. But you put one here, so that matches it. Put one here. But once you get up to here, you put the tread board up here, you've kind of shrunk. Um, you've shrunk the... Okay, I had to think about that for a minute. Uh, excuse me. So if you have a tread board here, here, and here, okay, you add it to all of them, it, it kind of equalizes itself out as far as how the, um, if you put a riser board, excuse me, it equalizes itself, the, the, the distance the tread's going to travel, okay? But you, if you're connecting this to a subfloor, you won't have a, a um, riser board here. It's already got a board there, okay? Um, and so that then makes this thing too long because you'll have a riser board out here. So you then take off the, the width or the, the thickness of your riser board up top here, okay? So then that will push everything back and will make it line up. Right. Now, last thing I want to mention is there's a couple of um, ways to hang stringers, okay? And I won't go into all of them, okay? What I mean by hang is attach it to the subfloor, okay? Sometimes you can have a ledger, different things. So whatever you decide to do, okay? Whatever you decide to do, make sure you decide before you cut the stringer and, and make sure that all the treads, the distances match up, okay? Um, uh, and that you know where to hang it from, okay? Um, down here, the toe kick, it's called the toe kick here. After we've cut this piece off, and there's an additional piece you might cut off, and you can do this after you've cut everything else off, but a lot of times uh, they'll put a horizontal board on the landing, okay? And they'll have, they'll, uh, they'll screw it or they'll hammer it down into the concrete floor, okay? And it'll be a horizontal board that will go this way in, okay? And your stringers then, you cut out a little notch here, okay? And this board then fits right in that notch, so it kind of locks it in place. Okay, that's called the toe kick. 
All right, I hope you enjoy this and uh, give you a little bit of understanding. I want you to write down the steps that I went through um, to create this stringer board.